Well, the Grand National, from a public point of view, it's the main race of the year. You know, it's huge. Coming forward, and they're off for the Randox Grand National Handicap Chase. People say if you win a Grand National, you get more public acknowledgement than you do if you win a Gold Cup. This is a big breakaway. Obviously, his run at Cheltenham's a bit of a concern. You know, he's got to get into a rhythm. He runs sort of with the enthusiasm he did at Chepstow in the Welsh National when he was second, and he's got a great each way chance, I think. We know that, unfortunately, horses get injured. To think that they think they're going to be able to storm it and stop it, I don't see what they're going to achieve. Apparently, there's some protesters that have blocked the fence. Oh, fuck. I don't think they achieved anything in doing what they were doing. It's April, the closing weeks of the jumps calendar. After a hard week at Cheltenham, Joe reflects on the season so far. Please enough of the season. It's been a stop start of season weather-wise, but they're, they're in pretty good nick again now. Does he hang a all up for that, Harry? Got a chance getting to 50. I'm more concerned about a million pound in prize money, which I'm 120 grand off. So I've only got three weeks. If we have a bit of luck, hopefully we'll get there. A little bit down on winners from last season, but um, plenty to look forward to. It'd be nice to get to 50 at the local track, wouldn't it? A couple of chances. Schrocker's dream, triple trade. You'd have a chance as well. With four runners at Wing Canton today, Joe hopes he will secure his 50th winner. But after two seconds, all hopes lie with triple trade in the last race. They're off and racing for the King Alfred the Great Handicap Steeplechase final race on the card. Triple trade is travelling very strongly. Oh, well, I had a fucking jab at that. Down towards the third last they go, and it's Native Robin and Triple Trade. Native Robin, the black cap, Triple Trade, the red sleeves, goes on at the third on, last. Man. It's Triple Trade for the Tizard team. Triple Trade. Go on, Bert. Brilliantly, Lazy Sunday. Go on, Bert. Send the fucking on. Lazy Sunday, and it's Triple Trade who leads by a couple of lengths as always. Go on, Bert. It's Triple Trade to Lazy Sunday. Triple Trade is what it is. Yeah, I'm chuffed. It's 50. That's good. It is like a good number, and, and I'm, I'm pleased, pleased to get there. After bagging the 50th winner, the yard's attention turns towards Aintree and the Grand National. This is a big breakaway. His run at Cheltenham is a bit of a concern, but yeah, it's the same sort of work at home, but he's had a few, few days out. That seems to have really freshened him up, and he seems to be really enjoying his work. The big breakaway will go to the Grand National. Yeah, not really happy with him. He looks a million dollars in his coat and that. You know, he's got to get into a rhythm. With him, he's got so much ability. He's always sort of threatened to have a big race in him. He runs sort of with the enthusiasm he did at Chepstow in the Welsh National when he was second, and he's got a great each way chance, I think. Well, it's just final preps, really, for getting organised for entry. Well, we do even amounts around the sand, and I want him to use the right muscles around there. Alice, get out of the lead on the right leg! It's driving me fucking nuts, that is, this morning. She still hasn't fucking done it now. If you look at it, it won't fucking do it, will it? So again, Alice, looking at it, get the lead on the inside leg. I want them to work properly around here. And it's just lazy if they just flop in round and, and not lead on both legs. Riders are lazy if they don't change them. And they know that, they get told that three times a week. That's what I'm here for. Joe plans to run El Dorado Allen at Aintree, but
but in the hunt to reach his million pound target, he cannot decide which race to run in. Eldorado Allen in the hurdle or the handicap chase. Luxury problem, isn't it? It's a 100 grand race or a 250 grand race. So if we get it right and he runs a big race, there's some, there's some decent prize money on the line. If the hurdle race turns out to be a seven or eight runner race, a quarter of a million pound race, I'd, I'd probably take a chance in that. But, you know, he controls the weights in the other race. I've already had two trainers ring me up with four days to go, are you running? Because it puts them in a predicament. I quite like being in control of that. I have a bit of fun with that for a bit. <laughs> Well, the Grand National, from a public point of view, it's probably the main race of the year. You know, it's huge. Four and a half miles over those big fences. People say if you win a Grand National, you get more public acknowledgement than you do if you win a Gold Cup. All the way to the line, Noble Yates has won the National. You know, this is a million pound race. It's a monster. And there are Forget around the Grand National, the horse. He needs to be a brave horse, you know, he needs to be fluent. That's the thing. I mean, there's more runners than in any other race. It's like any sport, isn't it? Can you handle it? And uh, there are. And we've had some great fun at Aintree. Dad was leading trainer at Aintree one year. We won the top and back to back with Ultra Gold. And it's Ultra gold. gold. He won it 12 months ago. Ultra Gold wins the top and. We want to have plenty of runners at Aintree. And we should do our best to try and have runners in it for as long as possible. As Aintree fast approaches, the media is engulfed in a breaking story. Now, the pressure group Animal Rising say more than 100 people have signed up to protest the potential dangers in the Grand National. We know that, unfortunately, horses get injured. To think that they think they're going to be able to storm it and stop it, I don't see what they're going to achieve. You know, they're activists. They enjoy jumping on the bandwagon. I'd much rather they phone me up directly and come into my yard, spend the morning with me, meet the staff, look at the horses, look how they're treated. I would welcome anybody into our yard at any time to see how well these horses are looked after. If racing or and the local police haven't got together and set up a good enough plan to stop a few hundred people trying to cause damage, it's, it's a bad job. This is a huge event and I can't see for a second it's going to be going to be affected. With no runners on day one at Aintree, Killer Kane is the first horse to race for Joe on day two. Killer Kane ran well at Kempton. He perhaps didn't quite see it out. I think the top of him is all about jumping with him and that's a bit of an unknown. If he gets into a nice rhythm and sit in the first half a dozen, he could run a big race. Well, the rain has continued to fall here at Aintree, the ground now being given as soft. The runners and riders making their way into the paddock now for the Topham. Two and a half mile handicap chase, just one circuit, encompassing 18 of those famous fences. Straight down. Hey, you fucking set upside, I don't know what you want. Good luck, mate. Looking at the runners, they're making their way out now onto the course. At number 28 is Killer Kane, Brendan Powell, 25 to 1. In a nosebag is Killer Kane in black and a yellow triple diamond. I'm only one in a nosebag, am I? I think so. Let him go there. The Randox supports Race Against Dementia, Topham Handicap Steeplechase. This is looking promising. Flags up again, and this time they're, they're off. off. Away for the Randox the start. Handicap Chase running towards the first of 18 fences. He missed the fucking start, he did. But they all got over the first. Oton Couleur towards the inside with the Grey Bill Baxter, and right there, Gin on Lime. That's right, that's right where he is. Lovely little posse. Killer Kane and Hard Lime. Jess Kill round the inside of Equus Dancer out wide Epsom to Who. And coming to take the fifth, Van der Blues is right up there with a gin on line to the inside as they get over the fifth. Quite a nice little posse there really, isn't it? Jumping all right. Ashtown lad wider out, followed by Killer Kane killed T.D. Briggs. As they now approach Beecher's Brook, fence number 10. Alert 
to the outside, followed by final orders and Bill Baxter. Al Dancer made a mistake. De Machine is next. Killer Kane, Jess Keel, and Cooper's Cross, and Fantastic Lady as they approach Valentine's. Definitely got a chance from there. Wider out is Ashtown Lad, fantastic lady, trying to get into things as they clear over this final open ditch and going there was Cooper. Uh, he's dropping back. Next is Killer Kane, then Kill T D Briggs. Jess Kill is under pressure. Stringing out a bit, aren't they, on this break? Pat then to find Hereditary Raw, who's in front of Burroughs St. Equus Dancer Select. Set up again now. There's only two to jump in there. I'll say you're finishing the first four, eh? It's Fanda Blues, then De Machine, and still then there's Ashtown Lad pulling up before oh. the second last. Keller Kane chasing them. Fantastic lady. He might be third. He might be third. I think the final fence. Oh, oh, man. Killer Kane in fourth. He's gonna be third. Oh, man. Bill Baxter on the far side. Fantastic lady. Oh, man. But it's Bill Baxter who goes two legs clear. That's a good run. Team game. And Bill Baxter wins the top of In second, fantastic lady. Killer Kane, a weary third. <laughs> third. Third. Loved him, yeah. Killer Kane, man of blinder. Jump great. Had every chance turning in and love the fences. Couldn't wish for any more, really. Boy. Well done, that lovely ride, wasn't it? Yeah, he did. Oh boy. Just a solid horse, you know, he turns up. That's perfect. No, he rode them perfectly. And he's, um, oh, he's running actually blinder. Yeah. That's running a blinder. Fucking lovely ride. And he enjoyed it. He's it. kept galloping. Good start to the meeting. Over the moon with him. Couldn't have asked for any more. Good run. Great, fuck me. Good run. Well done. He's had a, a real good ride and, you know, we're all chuffed to bits and um, I look forward to two nice runners tomorrow. Pressure's on. Yeah, he did. It's the morning of the Grand National. Chris and the team are taking today's runners out for a morning stretch. Although the sun is out, yesterday's rain has affected the going, which may have an impact on Joe's runners. You know, I, I love the rain for big breakaway, El Dorado Allen maybe wants it a bit better, but you'll never hear me complain about a bit of softer ground. This is proper natural hunting weather. He's got a right spring in his step. It feels really good. Stable jockey Brendan Powell, who is riding both horses today, takes some time to walk the course with his father. Well, do you remember the national when you won that? Back in the day, yeah. Look, he had a bit of class and he because he'd, he'd have almost won the Gold Cup two and a half weeks before. So um, he had that bit of class and he, he, he sort of, when I got to the elbow, I knew I'd win then, so. Crime and reason has been left in front of West Tip. He wasn't a great jumper of a park fence, really. No, he wasn't. He wasn't very good. He's only a small horse. He jumped better than I thought he would, in all fairness. Yes, it's Rhyme and Reason being chased by Mononor, just behind Mononor. I think you can go out there, you can you can be looking to see how everything else is going, as you do in a normal race. But with this, it's actually just survival early on. Killer Kane yesterday, you know, I was just thinking early on, God, is he going to get a position? And But after about five or six, you got the position you wanted, wasn't it? Mm. And you got in, he got into a lovely rhythm. He went and popped his fences. And, you know, he got there with his chance and he stayed on. He ran a lovely race. And you've just got to do the same. Ryman Reason is beginning to get up. He's going to win it. On the top of the line, Ryman Reason has won the national. I'm quite looking forward to it. I suppose everyone, when they're riding the national, thinks they have a chance because there's been some good stories over the years with, with outsiders winning it. He's got all the right credentials and just need a bit of luck. Luck along the way. If he, if he hadn't run at Cheltenham and coming straight here after a second in the Welsh National, given that weight, you'd, everybody would be saying, God, he's the horse to beat. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, exactly. Well, we've enjoyed some incredible racing here in Liverpool over the past two days. Crowds now flocking in to enjoy the sunshine on Grand National Day as we look forward to the world's most famous horse race. Joe's first runner on Grand National Day is El Dorado Allen, a horse that has proven invaluable to Joe and his owners. 
your name alone on the license now. So you've got Eldorado Allen coming up in this race. Well, he's been he's been dining at the top table for all season. Well, the last two seasons really. You know, if he keeps running like he's been running, then it gives him a little each way chance. A good start, and then sit in the first half of Dublin wherever you can travel. Yeah. Just be positive with it and jump in. The grey Eldorado Allen. He's quite an interesting runner, this horse. He's been plying his trade in grade one company nearly all season, but he's down into handicaps here, into calmer waters. It does mean, however, that he's carrying top weight of 12 stone. And here now, El Dorado Allen in the blue and yellow jacket, the grey, number one, at 10 to 1. Several in line for this William Hill handicap chase. 19 fences to be jumped. And they're away, off and racing for the William Hill Handicap Chase. Castle Robin towards the inside is handy, so too the great El Dorado Allen. He wants to be in the front, doesn't he? As they arrive at uh, the third fence, El Dorado Allen leading there. Two circuits ahead of them, El Dorado Allen from Shake'em Up Harry, then uh, on the inside, Castle Robin. Darren's hope is handy. He's travelling well, isn't he? And El Dorado Allen continues to make it under Brendan Powell, who will be aboard the big breakaway in the Randolph's Grand National, with Nassalam on the inside, jumping the next huge jump by the leader there, El Dorado Allen. Feels like he's in second gear. I've never seen a fuck do this before. This will be the second last next time round, and El Dorado Allen beginning to jump quite spectacularly. So a circuit left to go in this William Hill handicap chase, and El Dorado Allen giving a bold sight from the front here, under top weight of 12 stone. El Dorado Allen from Midnight River, and in third, Shake Em Up Harry. They're followed by Cap de Lily, and Kinondo Cueto towards the inside. Bow to greatness is about sick. And now heading towards the turn into the home straight. God! God. El Dorado Allen is joined as they run towards the third loss. El Dorado Allen off up again. God. Outside Cap to Lily and bow to greatness over the second loss and shake him up Harry. Probably took it up there from El Dorado Allen. Here's bow to greatness in behind them. Dem stretch on on the long run shake him up harry is claimed by belter greatness and belter greatness is praised by ben jones in the hands of harry skelton as they race up to the line and midnight river what a great jump on the last wins from Bowder Greatness second, Kinondo Quaito was staying on in third ahead of Shake'em Up Harry and El Dorado Allen. So what was he meant to do? Well, I didn't know he was going to make it, but he's just there and going quick, could I say? He jumped well, didn't he? When he ran out of petrol. Yeah, he did run well, yeah. He thought he was in fucking second gear all the way. Different fucking pace in a handicap, isn't it? He's jumped really well. I thought he was going to finish high from the back of two out, but from the last of the line, he stayed. Yeah. Thank you. Today he was just in his element, wasn't he? Yeah. Jump great. That's a good solid run. The time is here for the biggest jumps race in the world. Policing ramps up at the prospect of protesters trying to disrupt the event at any moment. Apparently, there's some protesters that have blocked a fence. Oh, fuck. Protesters have made it over the perimeter fence and onto the Grand National course. Merseyside police on the scene and dealing with it as swiftly as they possibly can. They say there are protesters on the course. Police are trying to get them off the fence. The news just coming through to us here that there is now a, an indefinite delay to proceedings. Now as things stand, the jockeys are being held in the weighing room. They haven't been sent into the paddock and the horses are circling the paddock now. We can't put an exact time frame on this, but clearly the course will need to be safe and cleared of protesters before we can get the race underway. After a long delay in the parade ring, the jockeys finally start to emerge, ready for the race. Yeah, we know what to do. Just be positive on him out the gate. Just make sure he's awake walking around. And then if you can get into a nice rhythm, you can get in the first ten, it'd be lovely. And just use his jump in, and then you've got all the time in the world, haven't you? 
And there's number 17, the big breakaway. He ran a mighty race when finishing second in the Welsh Grand National. Yes, welcome to the Randogs Grand National. Runners heading to the start. Adding to the tension down at the start, Brendan has to resaddle the big breakaway. Not what I need before the national. No. The big breakaway has been dismounted by Brendan Powell. Just a little bit of saddle adjustment by the look of things. With Brendan back on board, the race can finally get underway. Coming forward. And they're off for the Randolph's Grand National Handicap Chase. And uh, handy in the centre is a wave of the sea in a red cap. Uh, Melling Road, Reciter Prayer in a yellow jacket is handy. So too Frankie de Burley towards the outside with Cloudy Glen and also Coco Beach as they jump the first fence. At the first in the National, Cloudy Glen made a very bad mistake in his unseated rider. Recite a prayer has also gone. Hill 16 and Galvin, they go towards the second. Coco Beach just about landed out in front. And the big breakaway has gone and Durasso is another fall. Oh, fucking gone. Fuck's sake. The big breakaway falls at the second. It's a tense situation as the team swiftly try to locate Brendan and the horse. What's wrong? Oh, for you, fucking injured. I'm all right. I'm all right. I know, but. Oh my God. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. You haven't seen the horse, no? No, I don't know where he is. Oh, the horse galloped off. He, he's up. Brendan's never seen him, but we don't know where he is. Well, that's not our screens there, is it? So you got up anyway. Hello? Hello? Right? You've got him. Oh, well, well done. He's coming back, he's right. He looks quite happy. Fucking weird, isn't he? You lose horses for 10 minutes. But he's, out, he's absolutely fine anyway, that's the main thing. He obviously went down in a little escape lane. Job's good. Yeah. That is the national. It's a few days after the Grand National meeting. Joe reflects on what was an eventful experience. It was a nice day. It was nice to be part of one of the biggest races of the year, and oh, I did enjoy it. I don't think they achieved anything in doing what they were doing. But you could see horses getting agitated in there, you know. They're used to a routine into the paddock, five minutes, lock you on, go. But the police did a really good job. The result was all a bit, that's just a flat quarter of an hour, you know. We couldn't see anything, we really couldn't, so we just sort of stood there. He came jig jogging back in, and he, you, I could see from 200 yards away that he was he was fine. He wasn't lame or anything. He has ears prick. It's pretty stiff, but he was um, he's fine. That's the main thing. These horses are all bred to race and to do a job. It doesn't mean that we love them any less. You wouldn't do this job if if you didn't have a genuine passion. From day dot, there's never any stone unturned, and the care they get is, is second to none. This is the big breakaway, I've just checked him after his fall. He's a little bit stiff, a little bit sore, like anyone, you know, a bit, bit of bruising. So I've just loosened off all his muscles behind, give him a good stretch out. Yeah, he's been pretty good. Like anyone, you know, if you've exerted yourself and you strain a muscle or, you know, that's all it is really. That'll help him and he'll start moving back to the way he always did. They're like us, you know, they want some sort of fitness and activity and, and they thrive off it. They, they love to have a purpose in life and whenever they retire from racing, we always try to make sure that they go to a home that's going to enjoy them and give them a, an, another job to do and another purpose and, and let them still be active. I need 50 grand to get to a million, so that's what I'm trying to do. And this is the last, last two weeks now, so, so we'll keep going.